Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In a prior video, I showed you guys how to touch a part to make it explode. And this time we're going to do something very similar, but instead of touching the part, we're going to be able to click on it to make it explode. So just a couple different examples. This first one here, I can click on this part, and the part explodes. This second example here, I can click on this part, and this one in the background will explode. And finally, for this part, if I click on this one, it explodes a model. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first example where the player clicks on the part and that part explodes. So what you're gonna need to do is for whatever part that you want to explode, make sure you have a click detector under that part. And after you do that, we're going to add a script. So you can just go up to the plus sign and then add a script. For the script, the first thing we're gonna say is local part is equal to script dot parent. After that, we're going to make a variable for the click detector. And we're going to do that by saying local click is equal to part dot click detector. So this first one is a reference for the part itself. And then the next one is a reference for the click detector, which is underneath the part and it's named click detector. Next, we're going to make a function that will run whenever the part gets clicked on. And we're going to start that off by saying local function. The name of our function can be explode. Inside the function, we're going to put local explosion. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. And then we're going to be creating a new instance of explosion. And then after that, we're going to set its parent property and also its position. And we can do that by saying explosion dot parent. And we're going to set this equal to game dot workspace. And then for the position part, we want it to occur at the same location as the part. So we're going to be setting the position for the explosion equal to the parts position. So we can do that by saying explosion dot position. And this is going to be equal to part dot position. And finally down here at the bottom we're going to connect this function with a click event on the part by saying click which is a reference for the click detector dot mouse click and then we're going to say colon and connect and then we're going to be connecting this with our function which is called explode. Alright so let's go ahead and test out our code and make sure it's working. All right, and let's go ahead and test it out by clicking on the part and see if the explosion occurs. All right, so everything looks good, so let's go ahead and move on to the second example. Okay, for the second example, we're going to need two different parts. One of those parts is going to be clicked on, and the other one is going to explode. So for the one that's going to be clicked on, make sure you have a click detector for that part, just like we did before. And then for the other one, you don't need a click detector, but go ahead and just rename it to something that's easy to remember. So for mine, I chose explode part. Once you have those two parts, we're going to be adding a script onto the part that you want to be able to click on. So like before, just go over to the plus sign and add a script. This script is going to be very similar to the one we just wrote. So rather than rewrite the whole thing, I'm just going to hop back to this script and copy this. All right, and from here, we just have to make a few small changes. One thing we're going to do at the top here is make another reference for the other part. And we're going to do that by saying local explode part. This is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot explode part. So whatever you name your part, make sure you update that right here. So this other part is located inside the game and inside the game, it's under the workspace. And then whatever the name is, that's what you're going to put for the last part. And the other change that we have to make is instead of having the explosion occur on the part that we're going to click on, we're going to have it occur on this part right up here. So we're going to change it from part to explode part. And everything else is the same, so let's go ahead and test it out and make sure that it's working. I'm going to go ahead and click on this part and we'll check to see if this part in the background explodes. All right, so that looks good, so let's go ahead and move on to our final example. For the last example, we're going to be doing the explosion with a model. So just like before, whatever part that you want to click on to trigger the explosion, make sure it has a click detector. 
And then we're also going to be adding a script to this part. It's going to be a little bit different than the ones we did before, but we can still use that first script as a starting point. As far as the changes for the script, we're going to make a reference for the house model. And we're going to do that by saying local house is equal to game dot workspace dot basic family home. So whatever the name of your model is, make sure you update that here. To go through the model, we're going to be using a for loop. So we're going to start by saying for underscore comma and then item in pairs. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to start with the model. So that's house and then colon get children. So this is going to get all the items inside the house model. Outside the parentheses, we're going to say do and then press enter. The first thing we're going to do inside the for loop is say if item colon is a and then we want to check to make sure that whatever item we're looking at is a part. In addition to parts, we can also check for unions. So we're going to say or item colon is a and inside this part, we're going to do union operation. So if that item is a part or a union, then what we're going to do is we're going to say item dot anchored is equal to false. So this will unanchor the part or the union. After that, we're going to add these lines that we wrote before. In here, instead of part, we're going to change this to item. So just a quick recap of what we're doing is we're going through the house model and getting all the items inside of it. If we open up the house model, then we can see it's going to check all these different items inside the model. And then if those items are either a union or a part, then what it's going to do, it's going to unanchor that particular item. And then it's also going to create an explosion and have that explosion occur at the item's position. All right, so let's go ahead and run the code and make sure it's working. So let me go ahead and walk over to this part and we can click on it and the house explodes. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.